Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. You know, tons of people are always asking me, how do I start when it comes to working with animals? Maybe you guys that are watching, you're thinking like, man, I want to follow that dream as well. To be able to work with animals every day, it really is amazing, and maybe that's something you want to do. So I'm going to talk about it a little bit in this vlog, and of course, the way I started was breeding snakes. And there's no doubt that breeding snakes has been amazing for me, right? I've done it for like 32 years, and it doesn't matter what you start with, you know, you could breed ball pythons, you could breed corn snakes, geckos, whatever the case may be, whatever you're passionate about, you could certainly go down that path. The only issue is, is that when I started, it was just a new business, so the opportunity was much greater. Now, there's a lot of competition out there when it comes to breeding snakes. That's not to say that you shouldn't do it, it just says that there's a lot of competition. So it's gonna take time, it's gonna take patience, unfortunately, it's gonna take some investment as well. My advice to you is to just work with the things that you absolutely love. Take this amazing little ball python here. You know, the truth is when I started working with ball pythons way back in the 80s, people thought that they were junk animals, right? Because all that came in was wild caught adults that didn't do well and no one wanted to work with them. I worked with them because I loved them. My point is don't chase projects because you think you're gonna get rich or you're doing it for the money. Work with the animals that you really love, even if necessarily they aren't that sought after at the point. You gotta remember, take for instance like man mangrove snakes, right? Wild caught ones come in for like $75, but people will pay up to $500 for a captive born. So it doesn't have to be like an expensive animal or chasing money. I think that's the worst thing you could ever do is actually chase projects because trust me, patience is a big part of success when you're breeding reptiles. And who doggy, this monkey is upset. But certainly breeding reptiles isn't the only thing you could do if you want to work with reptiles. And again, I'm really talking about reptiles for a living. Animals are kind of the same type of thing in a way when it comes to mammals and so like that. But the truth is breeding reptiles is a great option. There's no doubt about it. It's just, you know, there's no one way to do it, right? There's a million ways you can be successful. But the truth is, is that there's many other ways you can work with animals too. I'm going to be totally honest with you. When I was a kid, I didn't grow up thinking I was going to breed snakes for a living because again, there was no professional snake breeders at the time. What I really wanted to do was work at a zoo. That's right, my whole dream when I was a kid was to be a zookeeper, and that's probably why I love zoos so much. And in a way, now I do work at a zoo. I own a zoo, right? It's not the biggest zoo, but it's a great place that I love to death, and I get to do all those things that I wanted to do working for a big zoo, but I get to do it here at the Reptarium. But don't get me wrong, I realize that most people can't just afford to open up a place like the Reptarium. After all, it did cost a lot of money, but the truth is you can start working towards that goal, right? You can be a zookeeper at another zoo and eventually open up your own place if you want to, or just get a job at a zoo. I mean, listen, most zookeepers don't make a ton of money, but it is an awesome job. I mean, to be able to be around animals, whatever it is. If you like reptiles, you can work at the reptile house. If you like mammals, you can work at that thing. The only downside is, is that there's not a lot of opportunity for zookeepers out there. I mean, most zookeepers kind of don't have openings, right? When someone becomes a zookeeper, they love the job so much they work there until they retire. So a lot of jobs aren't open. So don't put all your eggs in the zookeeping basket because it's kind of hard to get in. But once you do, it's absolutely amazing. So that's another option if you want to work with animals. And I'm just throwing out a bunch of ideas. As a matter of fact, do me a favor down in the comments. Let me know what you think is a great option if you want to work with animals. I'm just kind of throwing out whatever I can think. One of the things that, you know, as a bio major myself is science. I mean, you can get into the science side of things. You could do field research. You can get into all kinds of grant situations, work with conservation, all those types of things. That's a great option. It's a little hard because, again, there's not a lot of money out there for those types of projects. But if it's something that you're really passionate about, it's another opportunity to surround yourself with wildlife. Certainly another thing you can do is you can get into film and photography. When a film side, you know, you've got all these production companies that are going around the world like Nat Geo and BBC Planet Earth or YouTube for that matter. Everyone always needs a camera guy. And of course, then there's photography like my guy Jay here that hey does guys. both videography and photography. And as a matter of fact, today we have to make some stickers, right? Yeah, we actually have to go through. We have some stickers already over here and the rest we have to go through and make. So we're going to do like Toothless and we're going to go do Elvis and a bunch of the other animals yeah. so that we can have a bunch more on there. Exactly. So we need really high resolution, great pictures so we can make stickers. But there's a whole bunch of things you could do from photography as well. As a matter of fact, Jay is doing a contest over on his Instagram. Link in the description. Follow him right here. And when you hit 5,000, right? Yep, I hit 5,000. And what I'm going to do is whoever wins the contest will randomly select it. And whoever wins will actually get to pick any animal in the Reptarium. And I'll personally photograph that animal. And then me and Brian are going to sign it. And we're going to yep. send it off to you free of charge and all exactly. that stuff. So. so go ahead, give him a follow when we hit 5,000 over on his account on Instagram 
uh, you guys have a chance to win an animal of your choosing. In the meantime, we're gonna set up over here and we're gonna walk you through like how to take good pictures of reptiles. So uh, I hope that you uh, amateur photographers are gonna enjoy this segment. All right, so we have everything that we need here. We have lights, we have cameras, lenses, we have stands, we have a backdrop in this box over here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let Jay set this all up and let him do his magic and I'm gonna take a little break while uh, he's working hard, you know what I mean? And we are all set up. We've got our backdrop, we've got our camera, we've got lighting, all that type of stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and get our first victim, our animals, start taking pictures. And I'll actually have Jay kind of explain what he's thinking. For you guys that wanna take good pictures, he can tell you what his kind of procedure is to take amazing shots. All right, so the first animal we're gonna actually be taking pictures of that will eventually be stickers is Nova the Frill Dragon. So just walk the people through, like how do cameras work? Awesome, so uh, cameras work by using three different elements to gain an exposure, right? So exposure is like how much light is available in a scene. So in a dark room, there's less exposure in a light, you know, bright sunny day, there's a lot of exposure. The three things that we're using are shutter speed, which is pretty much how quickly the shutter of the camera closes. Then we have aperture, which is the iris of your camera. So it's a little thing that opens up like your pupil and dilates to the amount of light. And then the last one is ISO, which is pretty much a volume knob. So it's a gain, it's digital gain, which allows you to get a higher exposure but what the, the caveat is, is that you end up getting more noise in the photo. So it looks all pixelated and gross and we don't want that. So you want the lowest ISO, you want a shutter speed that's not going to cause motion blur because we want everything to be pin sharp. And then your f-stop, you want to be around f8 or f11, which is going to give us the most amount of depth of field, which is focus from front to back. So that Nova's little cute nose will be in focus as well as the back of him too. All right, let's do it. So what I'm going to be shooting at right now is I'm at f8. Yeah. So I'm going to be shooting at f8, ISO 1600, and a uh, shutter speed of 1 1 25th of a second. This is going to ensure that my photo comes out sharp. And I'm going to check the focus just to make sure that we're all good. So I'll zoom in here. You can see right on his eye is pin sharp. So what we're going to do is literally take about eight or 10 pictures of this. And again, you know, for those of you guys who are aspiring to be photographers, wildlife photographers, you know, you could be selling your prints. You could be, you know, licensing your stuff out to other networks or broadcasters, whatever the case is. So this is a really good thing. So uh, we'll just have fun shooting a bunch of animals and see what happens. So far, it's looking pretty good. Next up is my boy Potato over here, and compositionally, he's gonna be an easy one because he doesn't really move much, and Jay just has to find the right perfect spot for that. So we do have some challenging ones, and there's no doubt when you're doing wildlife photography, whether it's in captivity or out in the wild, one of the biggest challenges is capturing exactly what you want, right? I mean, composition is huge. Yeah, composition is honestly the biggest thing. I mean, if your lighting's right and all that stuff, and if you don't have composition, that's what makes the photo. So what I'm trying to do is line it up so that there's some type of curvature to his body, which which will you know, pretty much lead people looking through rather than just a flat you know, two-dimensional image. And of course our last victim was Elvis here. Okay, so Jay, what's next? So awesome, so now I bring these into a computer. I'm gonna get them uploaded, clean up any imperfections uh, through like, you know, Photoshop, clone stamping and stuff. Um, and then I'm going to send them over to Lori so she can get them printed out into stickers, which is awesome. For real, if you guys have any questions on photos or videos or cameras or what editing software I use and stuff, please come over to my Instagram. It's at jtomsky. We'll put a link down here somewhere. And uh, yeah, I'll answer any questions you guys have. Certainly animal behavior is another thing that happens and that kind of fits into the zookeeper category and maybe all the categories to be honest with you. But here we all work on training these animals and getting them habituated so that everyone that comes into the reptarium is really safe. But certainly Bruce is kind of my go-to, you know. He really has a history of like training dogs and stuff like that and he's brought the same type of mentality to that into the reptiles and he definitely has a passion for it. I'm actually about to start feeding Elvis here. So like it's actually really great that we actually started doing this with him because it creates actually not only just a really great experience for kids that come here but also actually creates a relationship with us every time i get elvis out i always pull him out i hold him i do all sorts of other things but like when it comes down to the ball training this is his bread and butter he's amazing with it see if i can get him to get excited you hungry there you go there you go there you go come on this way this way this way touch it 
Good boy. As you guys saw, it doesn't even care about the food. Almost like it like completely ignores it. Goes like, where's the ball at? Where is that going to be? And, and, and every time we always feed him, he keeps like, I mean, look at this ball. I mean, look at that. Isn't that crazy? He bites it all the time. Go this way. Go. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. Good. Good. Now, consistency is everything with these guys. Just like Brian was saying, like, you know, with dogs, like, uh, it as long as things sort of kind of fit the same way like military style went yeah, everything was strict everything was right on and everything was really consistent now that we do that with him he's just like a dog almost and that's why we always make that make that joke all the time that he is just like our own little pet dinosaur so not only is this great enrichment for him but this is even more great safety for us and no matter what, every single time i pull this blue ball he knows this means food but the moment i put it up I can pet him all day and it's just it's like it's it's just that easy guys it's awesome just like a big baby come on girl there you go it was not that long ago where there's no way i could have done this no way at all and uh she would have probably taken a bite out of my ear or something what we had started out doing was we actually started touching her with this so obviously i would never go reaching in and touching a, just any nile monitor at all so what i did was i would rub her on the back with this all the time and it got to a point where she actually started to learn that meant get out of the water and he's going to clean it up i'm going to have clean water here in a few minutes so once she started to realize that that trust started really starting to begin and we started actually forming our little friendship here and she started becoming a really great girl the combination of actually doing the target training doing that little trust movement with the hook and interacting with her you know touching her around the face and doing all these sort of things that you just really wouldn't do with a nile monitor at all and like once she got to the point where it's just like touching her on the face doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean i'm gonna get food right now i know the blue ball means food and she's just like oh my god look at this thing she just she's so freaking cute you guys remember yesterday i was trying to feed diddy and he was coming up and taking food but bruce has really been working on his kind of habituation to coming out and actually going on his shoulder and stuff like that so let's go ahead and see what he's got going on you want to come down bud you can see the food and come down come on eat up buddy good job so what I've been trying to do so he get used to our touch is instead of reaching in there and touching him, I get him to come out to me. Come on, bud. Come on. You know the drill. Come on out. Yeah. There you go. All right, bud. You're okay. As you guys can see, he's, he's still sort of nervous, but I'm getting up high. I mean, he... Uh, thanks for that right in the face thanks bud <laughs> so like like so he he's very sweet he's just he's just like Bella right in the face oh, thanks gosh. buddy appreciate it <laughs> uh, but like he loves to get up high so getting up high is really where we want him to be and he'll be happier and he'll eventually poop on me wherever he's planning on going so it's a work in progress it, this isn't this isn't going to just happen overnight like like it's the baby steps like the fact that he isn't freaking out and he's actually eating off my arm like this like this is this is a huge step this is big yeah. you know it may not seem like a lot but it really means a lot to me and, and i like i tell everybody every day like as long as i get a little bit I, I i'll take it yeah and that's the thing it's just about being consistent and it's about just those slow baby stacks and diddy is doing amazing and you can see even with bruce how much better he did for bruce than he did for me eventually we're going to get him to the point where he'll do that to anyone and crawl right up on their arms and people that are coming to visit the reptarium can interact with diddy just like they do with bella with diddy we hope that they'll I'll actually be able to hold it unlike Bella that you can only pet but he's doing amazing last but definitely not least but this is chicken strip my my absolute favorite right here because I'm really trying to work on him really hard now obviously he's still a little baby and we all know all, all the stories about chicken strip we've all seen him and honestly like all the time when I pull him out like I gotta tire him out like crazy because you know how crazy he could be so I get him tired out and then I hold him like this forever and I'm honestly he's a sweetheart he really is he's not even really all that angry at me he just he's just scared he's a little guy but I'm really excited about getting him all tamed down just like we do and again these are a bunch of different options i think personally and the way my life has went i think the educational side has so much opportunity because you don't need a lot of time you don't need a lot of investment and quite frankly you don't even need a tremendous amount of experience all you need is enthusiasm knowledge that you can gain for sure and you can go out and you can do educational shows schools are always looking for people to do educational shows birthday parties library events all kinds of different things there's a lot of opportunity there and that's something that i'm doing a tremendous amount of now and I love it it's one of the favorite things I've ever done in my entire life is getting around kids in particular and teaching them about reptiles so it's a great way to really work with animals quickly without having to get a college degree or having a ton of money or taking five six seven years to build your business so education not only is incredibly awesome very 
So education is not only incredible, education is not only super important, it's also extra, oh my gosh. <laughs> education is not only so important, it's also really a fun thing to do. And for me, I've kind of evolved into a situation where education is number one when it comes to my future. So as you can see, there's a lot of options if you want to start working with animals, but the biggest advice I could give you is just keep doing it. Follow your dreams, don't stop, and you'll eventually get there. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you enjoyed this video, here's another video. Here's an entire playlist I would love for you guys to see over here. Can you smash that subscribe button, please? And while you're at it, turn those post notifications on. Have a wonderful day. Be kind to someone. And I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.